Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader uh nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, day of trading. If you are uh, brand new to us, thank you very much for tuning in, finding us, spending a couple minutes with us. And I'll try to, as always, uh, help, you know, just to kind of navigate the markets from my uh, point of view on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. There was no uh, video last night. I had to do a quick uh, second thing for my mom. So I had to drive to Brooklyn, pick up some things and come back and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I apologize. There's no video last night, but here we are today. So if you could be so kind, just take uh, one second out, uh, click a like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And hopefully again, I can continue to bring you uh, good value. All right. So let's talk about the markets. Um, I, I think this is one of the better trading environments um, I, I've seen in a very, very long time. Uh, technically, uh, we are below the 50-day moving average. Um, that's not good, right? That's not a good thing for the bulls. But you're getting a lot of violent moves, uh, both to the upside and to the downside. As you can see here, uh, after a major fist fight here on the 50-day moving average where price discovery was found and lost and found and lost, you see a sequence of events here. And you see a big gap down consolidation, gap down consolidation, gap down consolidation, and a little bit of a bounce. So you're getting really superior value, especially in, in the in the high tech, uh, high beta mega cap space. You're getting really great ranges because it doesn't take a lot for some of these stocks to to really wake up. And that's a really really important point. Uh, the options market continues to be very very aggressive in betting. On those names, whether it's the long side to the short side, but the most important part is it's giving you tradable action pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, yes, you could have an inside day and there's nothing going on and the ranges are contracting, but when you look at a day like today and, and you look at the scoreboard, it's really not going to uh, paint a, 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 a you know kind of a clear picture. You have the Dow down 100 points and basically the Dow was down a lot more than that. Uh, you had both uh, Goldman Sachs. Uh, you had both Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan getting killed today. Took down the financial group today. Uh, both pretty much guided lower. Not obviously a good thing, but considering how much the Dow was down today, you can see the diamonds uh, kind of intraday. Anyway, this is a pretty big move off the bottom. So considering you had two of the biggest bellwethers, especially in the financial space, Goldman Sachs and uh, J.P. Morgan guiding lower. I mean, considering this could have been a really big, aggressive down day to the, in the markets, and then they didn't. You know, the Dow uh, closed only down 92 points, uh, S&P uh, up 24 points, and then that was a kind of pretty, you know, pretty impressive uh, bounce back day up 140 points. Now, here's kind of where we are uh, in the macro point of view. If you look at the QQQs, again, we are nowhere near, guys, nowhere near where we need to be on the bullish cycle. Uh, again, case in point, you know, again, gap down, sideways, gap down, sideways, gap down, and kind of a little bit of a dead cat bounce. But again, like I said, it is very, very trainable. We'll get to a couple of names. We'll get to some charts in a second, kind of show you uh, where they are, where they need to be. For me to get really, really bullish, I'm not talking about uh, taking trades like, you know, we'll get to the pivots in a second. Say we had great value, both to the long side and to the short side. But for us to get really bullish, right? To get that big bullish signal on, we're going to need to reclaim back, uh, which is 471 on the Qs, which we're getting. We're nowhere near that, right? We're nowhere near. So every single day, uh, like we always talk about in every single video, again, I get to be prepared for the next day. Whether that plays out or not, I have no idea. Okay. I don't think anybody has any idea. Like for example, uh, two days ago, you know, I thought, you know, I, the, if you looked at the charts, Right, we were sitting at the bottom of the channel and say, "Wow, you know, the market looks like it's about to, you know, get hit again." And we had an inside day, so it's very, very important. Like I say, every single day, nobody's a mind reader, nobody's a fortune teller. You have to be prepared on both sides. You have to identify levels to the upside, to the downside, and then let the options market start betting at the morning. Right, let the uh, option uh, buyers and sellers come in. Uh, let them dictate uh, a theme. Let them dictate uh, a range, and then you are aware of your ranges depending on how you trade. Again, I'm an active uh, short-term trader, whether I'm trading intraday 
or momentum overnight. That's again, that's a short term uh, intraday and overnight momentum trader. Other than that, if you're an investor, again, this video uh, and this uh, and this uh, forum is probably not you know right for you. But the point is, from the bullish point of view, you can't get really risked on buy, 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 buy until we reclaim 471. So again, we are still trading ranges. Tomorrow you have CPI data come out. And I believe you have PPI on Thursday. So obviously, it's going to dictate to us uh, exactly what happens next. And if you look at a lot of charts, right? If you look at a lot of charts, you'll see some charts that are still well below supply. And you'll start seeing charts that are actionable, right? They're actionable that reclaimed, whether short-term levels or bigger levels, to kind of get you to the point that they could increase their value in the next day. So let's talk about some names, right? Let's talk about some names. Uh, first, look at Tesla. Okay, let's start off with Tesla. Tesla has been on this incredible move all over the place, right? If you guys remember, four days ago, we talked about Tesla reclaiming the 50-day moving average, gave us a phenomenal move, right? Phenomenal move from this 220 all the way to 235 in a 24-hour area. Then the next day, right? The next day when the market got pulled, it got pulled like with everything else. But here's kind of where it gets really good, right? Look what happened here, okay? We reclaimed back, Tesla reclaimed back the 50-day moving average on the close. Obviously, it's a good thing, right? Obviously, it's a good thing. Every single time it reclaims, here's the, you know, here's, I'll give you a couple of examples here. On on uh, August the 15th, it reclaimed the 50-day moving average, went on a three-day run going from uh, going from 216 uh, to 228. Uh, on the September the 4th, it reclaimed the 50-day and went from 220 to 235. Today, it reclaimed back the 50-day moving average. Let's see if this thing has enough juice, right? The recent highs were 235s. We are getting a lot of really big bets uh, still coming in for the 235, for the 240 weeklies, uh, for the 230 weeklies. So institutional money flow is betting in this direction. Now that it reclaimed the 50-day moving average, it looks really, really good, right? It looks really, really good. I'd love to see uh, a move tomorrow to the 230 upper Bollinger Band, ultimately uh, to the 235 level. So if we could get any type of weakness tomorrow morning, right? Try to buy some on a dip into the rising 60 minute support. But if it goes, and hopefully, you know, hopefully it does go, uh, you could see that 230, 235 test of uh, last week's highs. You got a name, for example, like AMD, right? AMD is still well underwater. And again, here's a perfect example of how a stock can get above a short-term supply zone, okay? Macro-wise, it's still way underwater, right? For this thing to get bullish, you would need to get above like 151, 152. But here's a perfect example how you can find the range. You could play a range. Here's the five-day supply, right? And at the PS60 theory, is all about stocks going from supply to supply, demand to demand. They don't need to be a 20-point move. Here's a perfect example of that uh, AMD reclaim back the five-day moving average, you'll see in a second, uh, off today's pivots, and go right to the next supply, which is the 10-day, and it gives you a really, really good move. But if you look at the, the dynamics, right, the overall macro picture, it's still very, very poor. And that's the most important part to understand, and this is why you always have to be ready for both sides of the market. So for example, right, you have, you have a stock like Meta, right? You have a stock like Meta. It's sitting on its 50-day moving average, but it's kind of in no man's land. You have Amazon, right? Amazon is very, very close, right? Here's another example of a stock very, very close getting above the 50-day moving average. This is something you have to watch for tomorrow. There's another uh, update for the bulls, right? There's another update for the bulls tomorrow, uh, and Amazon reclaims the 50-day moving average. Again, it could go on a very, very big run. Here's the last time uh, that Amazon got above the 50-day moving average. It was on June the 5th. And the stock went from uh, 180 and a half, and it went in two weeks, so three weeks, all the way to 200. 180, 182, 50 weeklies are coming up. Our short-term 200 calls coming in as well. So again, this is something you definitely want to watch uh, for tomorrow as well. Look at a name like Microsoft, right? Look at a name like Microsoft. Again, really, really underwater. Again, there's not going to be a big play there. There's no, there's not enough room. There's a lot of supply. That's why being below the 50-day moving average is a big deal for the majority of stocks. But if you do your homework, right? If you do your homework, if you are really, um, really research-based, you can find those diamonds in the rough. You can find those areas of supply that gets reclaimed and go to the next supply, especially if there's an options market that comes into play. So for tomorrow, it's going to be very, very important. You got right, you got data coming out. 
at 8.30. Here's what the cues need to do, right? Here's what the cues. And again, we're, we're nowhere near uh, the macro 50-day supply, but here's what the cues need to do. They need to get back above, at least on the closing basis of this 260, 460 and change area. Again, it's not going to go from 460 to 471, but if you can get a close above 460, that's at least it starts a cycle of upside buys, right? Little baby steps, 460, 462, 466, uh, 464, 66, 69, and then ultimately the 50-day moving average. But again, this is why you have to be really prepared on both sides of the market because just in case they decide to pull again, again, you can see it visually, right guys? Again, consolidation, pull, consolidation, pull, consolidation, pull, consolidation, right? You have to be ready on both sides, but at least this market is a superior trading market. Maybe investors are having a completely different conversation. You guys are on an incredible roller coaster ride. Uh, short term sentiment is still not great until we get back above the 50 day moving average. But days like today, days like yesterday, you could definitely find diamonds in the rough and you could make sure that if there's enough room in these channels, this is why we trade high baby name technology, you'll get your trades, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars. And that's the most important part. So let's talk about uh, today's uh, pivots. Uh, again, some really, really good stuff uh, on today's pivots. Let me get back to the channel here. Uh, da, 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 da. Kid Ducky. Here we are. Okay, here we are. Really aggressive session today. Okay, really, really aggressive session. Uh, it started out, this is definitely a trade of the day for me. Uh, Tesla needs to confirm 22036, which is the pre market highs. That's also going to confirm yesterday's channel. That's the key for any stock to go higher. A stock cannot go higher until it reclaims the previous day's channel. It's a very, very important part. And it's a very, very basic part of stocks going up and stocks going down. So Tesla, great move today, right? Uh, needs to confirm 2020, 20 to 2036 pre-market highs. In the process, it's going to confirm the previous day's high. Massive move today. Uh, massive move. The initial move uh, was to uh, 224, which was the 50-day moving average. And it closed above 224. Right now, it's uh, pretty you know, up, you know, up a little bit uh, after hours. But if we can get a second day push and that 50 day is confirmed and those early buyers come in, you know, who knows? Maybe we can see a move to 230, 235 uh, in the next couple of days. So great move there. Great move there. Uh, SMCI, I still like. Okay, I still like uh, SMCI 419 uh, needs to build. That's the 60 minute supply. Again, tell me these. Tell me why. Again, when somebody says, why do you have so many lines? Look where the stock stopped today pre-market, right? 219 was the pivot. Look where the stock start to stop today pre-market. Uh, 418.88. This is why we have so many lines. So, so you understand where this supply is. So you're not guessing, right? So you're not buying into supply. But that's why um, I still like SMCI. Watch this thing the next couple of days, guys. This thing gets above that 419, 420. And there's another push in the market. You could see uh, 436. Really, really strong looking chart. Uh, AMD went out of its mind, went absolutely out of its mind. We saw some October uh, 150 calls uh, coming in in the afternoon. Uh, 139.50 needs to build. Here was uh, AMD. Again, you're not going to see this chart a mile away. We're so underneath water. But again, that's my point. Here was the 39.50 right here. It's the five-day supply that it got rejected the previous day and re it reclaimed today the 139.50 and traded all the way up to 143. Huge, huge move here. Let's see one more day. If it could push one more, maybe you could squeeze it out to 144. But again, uh, the rest of the move is a little bit uh, tighter than the rest, but a huge move, absolutely huge move. Uh, ALK, I wasn't even watching with all cares. Uh, Oracle, big move, great uh, earnings today. Big gap up today. Uh, 153.75 was the pre-market high. Uh, and here is Oracle. Massive, massive move here on Oracle. Look at this move here on Oracle. So here is the opening print, right? Here is the opening print right here to 153.75. It was the pre-market high. It came in. It reclaimed the 153.75. Congratulations to all you guys who caught it. Went all the way up to almost to 161. Big, big, big move on Oracle. Again, the market is a trading market right now. It's super, super good. Uh, ZS, I traded. Uh, I only covered a third down, like a dollar. Uh, 155, massive level of bills below can flush. The chart looks great. Just nobody cares about it. That's the problem. So, uh, yeah, so I shorted off this 155, went down to like 
43-40s. I only covered a third and the rest break even. Uh, it's kind of a shame, but nobody, for some reason, is this stock just just can't break down. You know, I'm still going to watch this thing, but again, only like a dollar and change move. Uh, Snapchat never confirmed. Uh, Carvana, definitely the biggest move to the downside today. Uh, again, this is my point about, this is my point about, it's a great two-sided market. It's a trader's market. Uh, Carvana, 132, if it builds below, uh, can flush. Here was Carvana, right? It lost the 132, traded all the way down to 124.30s. An excellent move. Absolutely excellent move. Uh, a little bit of cash flow poop move towards the end of the day on Amazon. Uh, 180 needs to build to get to the 50-day. It didn't quite get to the 50-day, and that's why we're saying for tomorrow, watch this thing for the 50-day. It went from 180, uh, 180 to 180.50. Just got to get above the 50-day tomorrow, guys. If this can, uh, this thing will wake up. Uh, and I believe, oh, MSTR was the last one. Again, here's the point of a stock coming off the bottom, and here's the point of the options market dictating where it's going to go. A buyer came in with weekly size for the 130s, 125.40 needs to build, right? You see that 125.40 needs to build? Here was MSTR. Here was the 125.40 right here. And the stock exploded to almost 130. Again, they're betting in the options market. The underlying security is getting its guidance for the option flow. And when you see a big buyer step in, usually good things can happen. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Big data coming out tomorrow at 830. Make sure you are prepared on both sides of the market. Nobody has any, any idea of where the closing price is tomorrow. It's, they're going to be. But at least if you are prepared on both sides of the market, you have a puncher's chance. Guys, God bless. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.